Hi, I'm Matthew with the Office of Instructional Technology. And today I'm real excited to show you the new features that Microsoft is offering within Word Online called Immersive Reader. So let's start by going to OneDrive Online and then double clicking on a document. Go ahead and open Kubi Directions. Clicking on the document will open it in the read only or view only view. So if we want to do anything with it, we need to click on Edit Document over here. And we want to edit in the browser. Okay, this opens it online as an editable document. Okay, so once the document opens here, we're going to click on the View. Once we click on the View tab, it gives us, among other things, three options on the left. Okay, so this opens a, a toolbar that lets you choose Editing View, which is what we're currently in. Reading view, which is the one that we are in when we first open the document, and immersive reader, which is what we are here to see. So let's click on immersive reader. All right, immediately the, the page becomes uncluttered, and pretty much all you see is the text with three icons at the top and a play button at the bottom. Resisting the urge to click play, let's see what these other icons can do. First up is the Text Options button, which looks like a pair of capital A's. Right, and the first option you have is Text Size. So you can repeatedly click to reduce the size of the text on the screen, or you can repeatedly click to increase the size incrementally. Right, nothing particularly groundbreaking there, but it is easy to access, and this is only the beginning. Okay, you can also toggle between more spacing and less spacing between the words. So it's just two settings here, more space or less space. It's a simple feature, but can be a powerful visual advantage for certain readers. Okay, there's only two fonts to choose from, Calibri and Sitka Small, and they were selected for their simplicity and clarity. And the themes take advantage of research about contrasting color and the preferences of digital natives. So the kids who are in our classes today. So you may have seen the white text on a black setting on some apps on your phone, maybe, uh, as opposed to the traditional black text on white background. But here are several other high contrast options students can choose from based on their personal preference. Uh, it's also based on research. According to the 21st Century Fluency Project, digital natives are least responsive to black text on white background. Their top preferences for fonts are blood red or pink, depending on gender, then neon green and burnt orange. Their top preferred backgrounds are black or red or pink text on a blue background. So Microsoft, uh, other than having the black background with the white text, has opted to leave the text all black, but they've given the kids some options for uh, the high contrast backgrounds that are built in. Okay, so the next icon over looks like a small bookshelf has four buttons that open up when you press on it. Syllables, nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And each of these buttons toggles on and off. So clicking on syllables, as you might expect, breaks all of the words into syllables. Each of the other buttons on the page is color-coded for that type of words. So if you click on the nouns button, all of the nouns are turned purple. If you click on the verbs button, all of the verbs in the document will turn red. And if you click on the Adjectives button, all the adjectives in the document will turn green. Of course, I wouldn't recommend turning all of them on at the same time. And the one other caveat I found is that the adjectives don't tend to be quite as accurate as the nouns and the verbs. Finally, the third icon is the Voice Options button. It allows you to determine the voice speed, which leads us to the Play button at the bottom of the screen. And of course, the Play button reads the text aloud and it draws student attention to the word being read, both by underlining it and also by graying out the rest of the screen, except for a small rectangle around the word being read. To run the QB from the school end, QB will only run for about two hours between charges, so it is best to leave QB plugged in both overnight and during use, whenever possible. So with Immersive Reader and Microsoft Word, you get the font size, the word spacing, the background colors, the parts of speech, and of course the text-to-speech. But that's not all. You can now convert PDF documents into Word documents, so you can take advantage of these same great features with anything you scan. But the benefits don't end there. The Immersive Reader started as a tool in OneNote, so you can use these same great features in that program as well. 
How much would you be willing to pay for all these tools? With Microsoft, they're free. But wait, there's more. With the Office Lens app, available for Apple, Android, and even Windows phones, you can take a picture of any text, whether a handout, a screenshot, an article, or a textbook. You remember those, don't you? And choose to either use the Immersive Reader tools right from your phone or save it to OneDrive to open it on a desktop or share. When I open my Office Lens app, the camera opens on my screen. You can scroll between four different settings, like the business card, photo, document, the whiteboard. Since this, is a, since this is actually a document, I will choose the document setting. So I'm going to put the documents in my viewer. I have it on the document setting. I'm going to take the picture. It begins processing the picture. One of the things that this app automatically does is it crops it down so that the um, everything that's not part of the document is cut off. If I have a second picture to take, for example, if I have a second page here, there is the option to press the plus one button in the little red circle, and the app then is to take a second picture. This time I'm going to take the picture at an angle. So this time when I take the picture, it also straightens out that picture. So this is a great app for things like uh, taking pictures of a screen from anywhere in the room. Uh, it automatically straightens that out for you. Okay, so now I've taken both the pictures. I'm going to select the Done button and choose to Save All. Now it asks me where I want to export this to. So I can export it to OneNote, to OneDrive, or to Word. And if a student is taking these pictures on their phone, uh, of a textbook, magazine article, anything, uh, they can choose the Immersive Reader and have all of the tools that we just saw in Microsoft Word available right on their phone. So they don't need to get up and go to a computer or a laptop, get out a Chromebook. Uh, they can take the picture on their phone, open it in Immersive Reader, and have the features of Immersive Reader, including having it read to them right there on their own device. Uh, if you choose to save it to OneDrive, it will save it as a picture file, a JPEG. So if your goal is to open it in Word and have the uh, Immersive Reader tools available, then you're going to want to select Save It or Export It to Word. And as you can see, it then begins transferring to Word. So at this point, I can switch back to the computer and go ahead and open this new document in Microsoft Word. So now when I return to my OneDrive, I find that a folder has been created for me called Office Lens. Now if this is the first time you've been to Office Lens, you'll only have that one picture image in it. But if you've used Office Lens a number of times as I have, you're going to want to organize this in a way that the picture you just took is right on top. So when you click Modified, uh, it puts it in order of, instead of alphabetical order by name, it puts it in order of uh, how recently the document was opened. So you can see there are two of them from about a minute ago because there were two pages. So we'll go ahead and open one. And as you can see, uh, the top of it retains the, the picture image because it recognizes that there's some graphics there. But as soon as it switches to all text, uh, right underneath the image, it gets to uh, just the, an editable text document. And I say editable. Right now, I'm just in a view-only mode. But if I click to edit the document, again, in the browser, because that's where my immersive reader tools are. So I just took a photograph of a document, opened it in Word online, and now I have an actual editable Word document. At this point, we're right back to where we started the video. I can click on View and choose Immersive Reader and have access to all of those tools that we had access to uh, for helping students. So at this point, we're right back to where we started the video. We are in Word Online in an editable document. And we have access to all of the tools of the Immersive Reader. And again, this is not limited to a document that is already in Word. It's not limited to PDFs that you can open in Word. It's literally any document 
anything that has text that you take a picture of uh, with the phone and use your office lens to get it into Word. So the students have access to all the tools available to them in Immersive Reader. Okay, so we hope you've enjoyed this quick tutorial. Uh, I think Immersive Reader really has the possibility of being a real game changer for a lot of our media students. And so I hope that you will take advantage of what you've seen here and open up Word Online yourself and get some practice with it and introduce it to your kids.